Hey hey, Ragnar here, and this is Ragnaroks, where we talk about game design. So, what makes a good companion? A companion chooses her own clients. Mm. That's guild law. But physical appearance doesn't matter so terribly. Well, that's most likely true, but I was actually talking about companions in video games. Characters that accompany the player through parts or the entirety of a game. They can establish a deep emotional bond between the player and the game, or they can also ruin the whole experience. Because we've had a lot of bad, annoying and downright frustrating companions over the years. But when do we consider a sidekick to be memorable and generally worthy of our time? The short and simple answer is when we are able to form an emotional bond with them. And that's really it. But realizing this can be tricky, because such a bond requires more than just a likable personality. A good companion has to be both emotionally and practically effective. A character can be perfectly fleshed out and likable and all, but when they turn your experience into a chore, they become an annoyance. An often quoted example for this is Ashley from Resident Evil 4. As a character, she might be alright, but a lot of players consider her a nuisance and that's because she's of no use at all to the player. I mean, you can park her in a dumpster to clear the next area without her getting in the way, but overall she's mainly a burden to the player and most people would probably prefer to just leave her behind if her death wouldn't cause the game to go game over. The problem with Ashley's role in the game is that her defining character trait is her helplessness. Now compare her to Elizabeth from Bioshock Infinite. Their roles in the narrative are quite similar. Both find themselves in need of the protagonist's assistance out of a dire situation. The main difference is that Elizabeth, right from the moment we team up with her, uses every opportunity to assist us in whatever way she can. When things escalate, she instinctively gets out of harm's way, she knows how to take care of herself, and in quiet situations, she proactively scavenges for the supplies we just ran out of, and always finds it God knows where. She also guides us through Columbia and helps us overcome obstacles we wouldn't be capable to without her powers. She is useful and dedicated the entire time, a teammate rather than a helpless parasite, and by that she makes herself worthy of our sympathy and our protection. We gladly rush to her aid when she's in trouble. The struggle she's going through seems genuine because she has limitations and weaknesses but is not solely defined by them, like Ashley in Resident Evil 4 or Eileen in Silent Hill 4, who are literally just those characters you have to prevent from dying. Booker and Elizabeth form an asymmetric alliance. She needs him as much as he needs her, and that makes their bond authentic and organic. My personal favorite example for a great companion is Agro the Horse from Shadow of the Colossus. He enables the player to traverse the vast and lonesome world on his back, but he's at the same time so much more than just a vehicle. This horse is filled to the brim with personality. He snorts happily and wiggles his ears when you call him, he shows reluctance when you approach a dangerous cliff, and even the controls symbolize that he's a spirited character. You don't assume direct control over him. You only indicate the direction and he reacts to it, with a slight delay because he has to process your command first. But that's also how it feels to ride a real horse. He extends the player's capabilities in the game, without ever becoming a hindrance. Agro and Wander share a very down-to-earth bond. He trusts us with his life and is always reliable and dependable, a true friend. It's an extremely subtle relationship, but that subtlety is what makes it so organic and effective. I really love to observe people play this game, because literally everybody finds themselves talking to Agro at some point, saying things like, hey Agro, good boy, there you are, stuff like that. And the moment when people realize just how strong that emotional bond is, is of course Agro's demise, when he falls down the cliff right before the final boss and gets swallowed by the deep abyss, because that moment has an insane emotional impact on everyone. No one feels relieved that the annoying horse is finally gone. No, people are floored by the loss of him, without exception. And that's because he embodies everything a great companion should do while avoiding all the common traps. And this can be boiled down to three golden rules of video game companionship. Number one, a good companion has an organic relationship with the protagonist. Because if a character is likable is a subjective thing for every player, but a meaningful bond can be established in many ways. It can be a complex three-dimensional character dynamic like the relationship between Elizabeth and Booker, or it can be as down to earth as the bond between man and beast. In all of these cases, player and companion form a symbiosis from which both benefit. Number two, good companions are useful. They enable the player to achieve things they wouldn't be capable of without them. 
That doesn't mean that they can't have weaknesses. To the contrary, a character without flaws is a bad character. But in order for the companion to not become a parasite, both have to contribute to that bond. As a player, I want to get the feeling that we're pulling the same rope. And number three, a good companion must never feel like a hindrance. When this feeling arises in the player, it's usually the result of disobeying one of the first two rules or of outright bad game design. For example, if you constantly see the game over screen because your sidekick died without you having a chance to prevent it. But there also have to be situations in which they need our help. Otherwise, we'd be the parasite. But the game has to make sure that they, as mean as this sounds, have earned our efforts to save them. When Ellie is held captive by the cannibal leader in The Last of Us, it doesn't feel like a burden to fight for her rescue. We want to see her safe because she's given everything and went through hell for Joel many a time before. Oh, baby girl. <gasps> Now just take a look at how Fallout 4 introduces dog meat in the beginning of the game. When we meet him for the first time, he approaches us and seems really happy and signals that he's alone and in need of a friend and leader. Once we accept him, he immediately finds stuff for us. If we've tagged materials for search, he'll instantly prove his usefulness by finding and showing them to us. So we instantly know there's a genuine advantage in having him around. And then suddenly a handful of mole rats attack. And he both shows us that he's a worthy comrade in battle, but also that we never need to worry about him dying. Because he can only be stunned. He's invincible. So he'll never become a burden to us. Now if you consider Dogme to be a good sidekick or not is up to you. What I'm trying to show you is how this first encounter is designed with the sole intention to win the player over in as little time as possible. By almost pedantically working out these three rules of good video game companionship. So, do you want another example of a good companion that obeys these three rules? The Weighted Companion Cube. Yes, if you think about it, it's a downright parody of companions in video games. In the sterile cleanliness of Aperture's labyrinth of test chambers, that vibrant little heart icon is the only glimmer of positivity for an emotionally isolated and sensory deprived protagonist. <laughs> It protects you from dangers like lasers, energy balls and sentry turrets and without it, you wouldn't be able to solve the puzzle. And according to GLaDOS, They would rather die in a fire than become a burden to you. See, by following these simple guidelines, you can even make a player grow fond of something as barren as a storage box. So what was your favorite companion in a video game? Or your most hated? Leave a comment to let me know. Thank you for watching. If you've learned something useful, please leave a like and share this video. For news and updates, follow me on Facebook. And if you want to support the show, consider joining my Patreon. My name is Ragnar and I'll see you next time on Ragnaroks.